I'm Dr. Robin. I'm a former competitive beach volleyball player and turned psychologist with continuing education and nutrition. This is Russ. He's a former competitive bodybuilder and trainer on the Mr. Olympia Tour, who's being a weenie today. He's been learning and teaching nutrition for the past 45 years. Together, we're the founders of the Whole Food Muscle Club, and we've written the book, How to Feed a Human the Whole Food Muscle Way. And we come on here every day. Which is available on Amazon. Amazon, yes, Monday through Friday. And we try to give you tips or advice or share information with you or stuff that we've learned. Um, I do a lot of research. Those of you who know me know that I read um, everything all of the time. I read two books over the holiday weekend. So today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about weight gain and why it is so easy for weight to jump on and so hard for it to jump back off. Can I just interrupt one second? You can interrupt. I just want to tell the people that are members out there that we scheduled our next live Q&A oh, yes. for Tuesday, uh, the 17th at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Eastern time. So uh, get your questions together, set them in pre, you know, pre-hand if you want, and we will address those, or you can ask them live. Yep. So for those of you who don't know, we do a live Ask Us Anything webinar for members uh, once a month on the third Tuesday of the month. Right. So that's what and that's on a webinar, so it's not on Facebook, it's not on, it's actually close I don't know, closed circuit, whatever you want to call it. It's, yeah, it's, um, it's a, webinar. a webinar. Yeah, and, and uh, so yeah, we'll do that. If you're not a member, you can go to wholefoodmuscleclub.com and join, and you can join us for that. Right. And I do have some questions people have already sent in, so we'll be right. doing that on the 17th. So thank you for that. No problem. So back to weight. Um, you guys probably remember back in the middle of November, we had two um, potlucks that we went to on a, yes. Thursday, on a Friday and a Saturday, like back to back. And I told you that between Friday morning and Saturday night, I gained five pounds. And just literally, my weight just popped up. And a lot of you ask, well, you know, what happened? What caused that? Well, first of all, it's bulk, right? You're taking in a lot more food. Well, I did. Took in a lot more food than I usually would. All face style. That's hard. Well, and because we don't typically eat dinner anyway. Right. So, you know, if we usually eat just a big breakfast and a big lunch, and then we just kind of have a little snack we in the evening. We graze in the evening, yeah. Yeah, and so to have an actual, like, buffet, huge, like, vegan platters of food yeah. <laughs> for two days in a row, um, yeah, first of it's bulk. Then the other thing is there's a lot more energy there, right? There's more oil. There's more, um, you know, it's a vegan thing. There's processed food. There's more desserts. Yeah. So there's just a lot of different foods that I usually don't eat. So that's what causes the weight to pop up right away. Then um, it sticks around, and here's why. So obviously the energy's there. Your body has to do something with it. And good morning, Deborah. Good morning, Deborah. It's good to see you. Thank you. We are having a good morning. I hope you are as well. Um, so your body has fat cells that are just sitting around empty, waiting for you to put in extra energy. So it can be like, oh, yay, extra energy, and it wants to store that. So even if you go back to your regular way of eating, which, of course, I did, your body still is like, oh, I'm going to hang on to all this energy that I can, and it, and it does. So then you go back to your regular way of eating, and it's like, oh, maybe I can't store this, maybe I shouldn't. Yeah. And so it does burn the fat, but... And if you've read our book, you know I talk about this in, in the book. When your body has a fat cell that's had fat in it, when it first burns that fat, it fills that fat cell with water. Because it's like, well, I might need that cell. Yeah, I don't keep want the space. I, I want to hold the space because there might be energy coming that I want to put back in there. So let me just hang on to that space so it fills that fat cell with water, which means you're still holding that weight. Now, if you continue to you know, eat the way you usually eat, and your body realizes, oh wait, nope, I'm not gonna need that space, it does make that fat cell go uh, flat again, and you get what's called the whoosh effect, which is your body suddenly drops weight. So over the course of the week after, um, after those two potlucks, um, a week later, I was still up one pound, which, you know, one pound isn't a huge deal, whatever. But we're in the holiday season, and so it's really easy to, you know, just have, maybe you have an extra glass of wine. Yeah, we, had, we had Thanksgiving. Right, we had Thanksgiving. My weight popped up, you know, a couple of pounds again. Um, maybe you have desserts that stick around in the house <laughs> because you make desserts. And then we have two cupcakes still in the fridge from, from you know, Thanksgiving. And you don't want them to go bad. So no, you want to eat those. No, kill them go bad. And so, you know, your body has got, got these fat cells. It's like, i got to put fat in there. And so it, it makes it a lot harder, especially this time of year when maybe you're eating really well for six days, but you've got that one day where you're like, oh, you know, whatever. And if your body keeps those fat cells with water in them, the weight's going to stay on. So I would say 
just make sure you're eating really well during the week and then don't worry about it if you know you're, you know what's going on and then it will it'll straighten itself out as long as you're not eating really really heavily or really really richly multiple times a week right um you know go ahead i was gonna say so what, what tends to happen it used to happen to me is when you get into the holiday swing let's call it and that's from let's say thanksgiving through the first of the year you start eating foods because you're seeing relatives and all the foods you would going to parties have. right um and then what happens is the days that you're not actually with family you kind of continue you have the eating. leftovers right? right so you continue that eating and now we're talking about not just every once in a while you're taking like a month and a half of, six weeks of indulging let's call it yeah um and so you know that's why most a lot of people gain weight during this time of year and then they struggle to get rid of it after the first yeah uh, so so well. i would say don't take leftovers home don't. that's always a good a good <coughs> thing <coughs> Excuse me. And if you're cooking, send the leftovers. Yeah, away. send the leftovers with people. Unless it's whole food, you know. If you're cooking, you know, reg the way you regularly mm -hmm. eat, then you can obviously keep it. That's not a big deal. But you know, just be aware of how much extra because it's the holiday season, and it is, and that you know that's kind of a, a reality. And if it's a pound or two, that's going to go away come the new year right. when you get back on your regular track or whatever. That's not a big deal. But if you're consistently a pound or two every week. That's something that's yeah, going to be a Yeah, now you're 8, 9, 10 pounds over. Yeah, you don't you know, want that to happen. You want to be. But, yeah. and, and, you know, that, that, that whoosh effect is, is real. Like, your body does hold water. It does keep the fat cells open because, and that makes it even faster to go from your lips to your hips. Right. So if you've, if you've been like me and you had that, like, little weight gain from whatever, and then it went away, that means the fat cells went flat. Try to keep them flat, <laughs> as hard as that is. Yeah, so... You know, as we always say, the holidays, the actual day themselves, you're with family, you know, you're, you're festive, you're partying. Do that. Don't punish yourself. If that's something you want to do, if something you don't want to do, I'm not telling you to do it anyway. Right, yeah. But if it's something you choose to do, do it and enjoy it. Just don't carry it. Don't carry it to the day and a day and a day and a day. Next thing you know, you're, like I said, you're yeah. a month and a half of beating poorly. Um, and then, regardless of what happens to you in these, in these this month and a half, don't get discouraged. Go into the new year thinking, okay, I'm going to get back on that horse and let's go right back to it. Because I know a lot of people, they start saying, well, you know, I already did this. It's too late. I can't do anything about it. And they just continue the bad habits. So, um, you know, get back on that horse as soon as you can, hopefully between the holidays and if not, certainly by the first of the year. So Shannon's asking, how often do, um, do I weigh myself? I weigh my, and so this is me and this is not me that's right for you. I weigh myself twice a day. And part of that is, back in my 20s, I did have anorexic tendencies, and so I can be very obsessive about, you know, oh, I got, th this is soft, and I don't like this, and this makes me unhappy. And so what I found that for me, I weigh myself in the morning, you know, after I get up and go to the bathroom and whatever, I weigh myself then, so I have a morning weight, so I know what that is, and then I weigh myself at night before I go to bed. So I have what's what I call a night weight. And I do track that. And that for me helps me not be obsessive about, oh, you know, I need to be thinner. Oh, because I know at my height that if I weigh less than 125 pounds, I'm too thin. That's not okay. And I know that on a logical level. And so emotionally it helps me to have that number on the scale. Because if I don't have that number on the scale, I can become obsessive about wanting to be leaner. And that's, that's not healthy for me. Um, what I found with people who only weigh themselves once a week is that you miss the weight fluctuations and you don't really know what your body is doing. So for my clients, those who are in an emotional place where they can handle it or are in an emotional place where I can help them handle it, I do ask them to weigh themselves morning and night so we can track it so we can see what their weight fluctuations are. Russ will fluctuate up to five pounds. Yeah, and I also don't weigh myself necessarily every day. He doesn't, every not day. every day, but no. he does. His weight fluctuations are much bigger than mine are. For me, it's usually about two pounds between morning and night, maybe two and a half pounds. So my fluctuations are a little smaller than his are. But if you weigh yourself regularly, then you know and you understand. Like, I know if I'm carrying weight. I call, I, I tell my friends, I have a night weight in the morning, which means I'm weighing about two pounds more than I should in the morning because it should be my night weight. And then, of course, your night weight is more. And then, you know, I also know on fasting days what my weight typically does on a fasting day. On a fasting day, I usually gain only half a pound between morning and night because we don't need as much food. 
So that's the way I handle it. That doesn't make it right for everyone, um, but for a lot of my clients, it's been really helpful for them. And also, if you have um, GI issues with constipation and that kind of thing, weighing yourself regularly will also help you um, kind of understand what's going on with your GI tract. So that I definitely, I know I have one client whose doctor tells her to weigh herself every day. For that reason, she has GI issues. So. Anything else you want to add about that? The only thing else I'll add is that whenever you decide to weigh yourself, be consistent and make it that time. So if yeah. you want to weigh yourself the first thing every every morning and only once a day, then make sure you do it before, like if you do it when you get out of bed and go to the bathroom. And wait, wait, wearing weigh the same yourself. things, either the naked next day, or don't, pajamas. Don't do it after breakfast. Don't do it after yep. you've had some water. I mean, literally do it under the same circumstances every day. And that goes for at night. You can also do it at night as well. So if you want to weigh yourself every time before you go to bed, yep. then I'll make sure that's when you do it. Don't like weigh yourself one time before dinner and one time after dinner or something like that. Just it it makes consistent. a difference. It, it really does. does. It, it, yeah. it allows you a consistency. How often should should you fast? That is a bigger topic than we can, than we can talk than we can cover today because we'll be on here all day. Um, and it depends. And should is an interesting word because it depends upon who you are. So we will do another series on uh, fasting. It's been a while since, we'll, so we'll do another one. Um, I did want to remind you. We forgot to remind you yesterday. Um, if you are eating your Brazil nuts on the same schedule that we are to help with your cholesterol, the first was on Sunday. We try to eat our Brazil nuts on the first of the month. So eat your four Brazil nuts if you are on the schedule that we are and you are eating them um, for your cholesterol. Level. And that's four a month. A month. Yeah. One yes. time, one sitting, four Brazil nuts. That's what we do. Do not exceed. Yeah, and the, we can get into that. At we a can get into that another day too. But right. just we had to remind you: if you're eating your Brazil nuts on our schedule, eat them. We right. forgot to do it. Okay. All right. I think we're gonna eat oatmeal okay. now. We're gonna get away from this place. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, we'll say eat real food, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.